Well now, we're getting there. Uh, we're getting there pretty convincingly actually. This weekend I've mostly been occupied with this baby. If you've been watching right back to the start, you'll recognise this is the first panel I constructed. Um, doesn't look a whole lot different, but uh, it is. Uh, the first thing I've done is taken it apart, dismantled it completely and rebuilt it. It's now got uh, paper insert instead of the acetates. It's nice and flat, <laughs> which it wasn't before. Uh, and I've managed to get rid of the cracks on the front. Now I didn't replace the acrylics, all I did was swap the front and the back acrylic. And that worked reasonably well. So that so that's a good start. I mean that panel's looking a lot better than it was. The other thing I've done is I've wired it up. So this was a relatively easy one to wire up. 13 components, I think. Yeah, 14 signals and a ground. I've got one potentiometer on here. That was the, the only uh, slight difference from some of the other panels. And I've done the umbilical cable as well, so it's ready to rock. I've just got to plug this in. I've, I've wired the, the umbilical up. It's getting pretty crowded inside that um, inside that wiring box now. Uh, what you might notice, if you've got a keen eye, is there's only one hole left in the side of the box, which means there's only one umbilical left to come in, one panel to go. If you've got an even keener eye, you probably spot that there's only 31 switches. Uh, inputs available. One final Bodner board which has got one wire plugged into it so far and unfortunately I've got 35 signals on this last panel. Not quite sure how I'll deal with that. So that's so that's the main thing I've been doing. What I'll do is later tonight just plug that in, give it a go and then I'll be truly flyable. Everything else with the exception of the fuel panel I can do without. So what I'll be missing is the test panel, all the rotaries for setting the bugs and so on. But that's navigation stuff. I, c I can do without that and convince fairly convincingly fly around and even navigate using the GPS panel. So I'm getting pretty psyched up really to, to fly this in anger. Well the other thing I've been doing, you may or may not be able to discern any difference from the, the view I've set up here. I've enclosed this side of the cockpit that was ready to go uh, but I've bolted it on today. I've also put some cladding on there. This is just experimental at the minute and a, and a bit roughly done. Uh, I just I was wondering what sort of stuff to put on this. I want, I want it to be blacked out and I had various ideas about how to do that. I was thinking of carpet tiles and all sorts of stuff. This I just had this in the garage. What this is is it's just that weed control membrane that you put down in your garden. So uh, I had a roll of that and uh, it's fine. I mean it's great. It's gonna, you know, at the moment it's just taped on with masking tape to, to get me a general impression of what it's going to be like. But that's going to be a cheap and cheerful solution I think. I've also made a curtain behind just to try and get rid of some of that um, reflected stuff from the bookshelves and the furniture and whatever's behind. It's just, it's very thin, I don't know, it's going to take away some of the edge of that. Whether it's going to make the filming more convenient, I'm, I'm not sure, yet to be established. And in the doing of that, I've been introducing more and more intricate ways of banging my head. <laughs> so. The other thing I'm starting to get pretty psyched about is uh, I got an email from Iris Dynamics today about the force feedback yoke. They're not far from entering production. They've, uh, they've just released a video with a pre-production yoke being demoed with X-Plane. Uh, it's a pretty useless demo to be honest but um, but it shows how close they are. And I mean I say it's useless, I mean it's just not very exciting but it, it shows you know what the thing's going to do. So they're going to be they're going to be sending out emails to all the Kickstarter backers uh, in preparation for shipping the, the real thing. I'm trying to work out some kind of deal with them. I'm not going to ask for a free one because I've paid for one <laughs> and it's a good price but um, I'm trying to get some sort of deal on the shipping or something in exchange for doing a publicity video for them because uh, I've got to say that you know that's a, that's a big 
there's a big gap in their marketing at the minute. They've they've released this demo demo video and it's you know because it's an awful lot better than that. So we'll see. Bit of uh, speculation there. Finally got everything working that I needed to. Uh, I've been working on the Lua code, particularly for the last remaining things on the GPS panel. The, the ADF radio was causing a bit of a problem, but I uh, got some help from Finn at Aerosoft. He um, very helpfully pointed out the, the LVARs that I needed and how to manipulate them. So we've even got the countdown and the count up timer working on the ADF radio. Which is which is great. I mean, it, it's um, it's pretty useful. I've got a countdown timer. I've got a little hardware one here, but um, that means I've got two. Uh, but it's just cool as well, uh, and it's the sort of thing that in the virtual cockpit you're almost you know unlikely ever to use that because it's so so much of a faff program that well poking the buttons with the mouse. But when you've got it on the panel, it's just you know. It's, the real thing basically so um so we got so we got that working and subject to the to the not having the rotary i'm going to, again i'm going to can use the rotary over here or on the adf radio so the only problem with that is it's you know it's in the wrong place but um, um what else have we done oh yeah i've um i've worked out the shift on the rotary controls as well it, it ought to be possible to do that. And I've described the shifting in a different in a, another video. It's the turn versus push and turn. The push is the shift key. I did, I did figure out you can do that in Linda, at least in principle, with the local shift function. But uh, in practice, that seems to be buggy. I've, I've read reports that it's, uh, there's problems with the shifting functions. And actually, when I was working on it yesterday, it did some very strange things to my Bodner boards, I mean at one point all my Bodner boards except one just dropped off the face of the, the earth and uh, nothing could see them the only thing I could do to get them back was reboot the, the computer and uh, now I'm not, you know, it's not a dead cert that that was caused by Linda but it was very, you know, it happened precisely when I was playing with the shift function on the rotary control and then it started working inconsistently and they stopped working and then everything disappeared so so I've worked out a different way to do that I've implemented that myself using a little bit of Lua code and it works brilliant so all the rotaries I've got chip functions on those so I've got fast and slow so we're ready to go once I've got this panel wired up well it is wired up once I've got it just checked out I've got rudder trim got parking brake, I've got the uh, yaw damper and most importantly I've got the autopilot manual mode controls so it's gonna be freaking awesome you gotta say <laughs>